Hey, my name's Tracy Lindsay, and I'm the director of an organization called Tetelestai House, and we minister to women coming out of incarceration. And today I just want to share a little bit of my story with you. Um, I, I don't know where you're at, but I know where I've walked. Uh, so today I wanted to share a little bit of that with you. So in 2010, I found myself at the end of a 16-year meth addiction, headed to prison for the second time completely lost, broken, and alone. Had not seen my husband or my children for over six years. But it was inside that prison uh, that I found true freedom. Uh, I went into a program inside the prison called PAL and its principles and applications for life. And every day I was hand fed the word of God. Inmates were trained up by chaplains throughout the state and they sat me down and they told me who Jesus is, what he did for me, and who I could become in him. That he was fully God and he was fully man. That he left heaven to come to earth and walked a sinless life to pay the penalty for my sin on the cross. And that he defeated death and rose from the grave and, and through belief in him, I could have freedom and forgiveness. And honestly, at 33 years old and 16 years of meth addiction, that sounded really good for the person sitting next to me. But maybe I had done too much to be forgiven. But on September 14th, 2010, I was reading in the Word of God, and I was reading in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. I was reading about the virgins and the lamp oil. And I get to the very last sentence, and I read the words, I do not know you. And I realized in that instant that I was a lost sinner fixing to bust the gates of hell wide open without a savior. So I got up from my table, I went into my cell, and I got down on my face. And I cried out to God, and I asked him to save me. I asked him to forgive me. I asked him to use me and to use me up. And I told him that day, God, if there is anything good left in me, I give that to you. And if you can take 16 years of addiction and use that for your glory, I'm giving you that too. I left my cell and I, I told our house mom, I said, I just got saved. And she said, you be sure and tell someone. And I thought, are you kidding me? I'm going to tell everyone. So I have since heard the definition of salvation is when God takes you from a life of hell and he places you in a whole new walk. <sighs> and that's what happened to me that day on that floor in that prison cell. I became freer inside prison than I had ever been in my entire life. Romans 8.28 says that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Not only did God save me in that prison, but he called me to missions. And now he's taken that life of destruction, that mess that I was in, and he's using it every day for his glory at Tetelestai House. I get to come alongside women who are trying to overcome the very things that God has empowered me to walk out. And I am so very grateful that he can turn a mess into a message. So man, I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're walking through, but there's one thing that I want you to know. The Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. I was no one, no one special, nothing important about me except that he had created me in his image and for his likeness. He chose me. I like to think that I chose him, but in all reality, he chose me. And he wants to choose you. He can save you. He will change you. All you have to do is cry out, and he'll meet you right where you're at. I want you to know today, man, God sees you. We prayed before we ever made this video. Uh, we have no idea how God's going to use this. Um, but I, I never want to miss an opportunity um, to share the hope, the message of hope that was shared with me. Uh, so if you're watching this video today, it, it's not by happenstance. It's, it's not by accident. Uh, maybe, maybe God's tugging at your heart. Uh, maybe you think that, that this message is good for your neighbor, but would it apply to you? I want to share just a few verses of scripture with you and let you know that he does see you and he is pursuing you. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
That means not just me, not just you, but everyone. We all miss the mark. We're never going to be good enough to get to heaven, not without a Savior. So God is holy. He is blameless. He, he cannot be in the presence of sin. We are sinners. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So our problem is sin, and it separates us from the one who created us. The penalty for that sin is death. Blood has to be shed. Someone, someone has to die for that sin. Chapter 5, verse 8 says that God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that means that God knew there was going to be a Tracy. He knew that she was going to make mistakes. He knew that she was going to fall short. He knew the penalty for that sin was death. But he demonstrated his love, and while I was still in my mess, while I was still an addict, while I was still living in that addiction, Christ died for me. Christ died for you. If you were the only sinner in the world, he would have still paid your penalty that day. Whenever I share the gospel in jail, I, I ask the ladies, who has court on Friday? And somebody will raise their hand and I tell them, so right when the judge calls your name and you stand up, I stand up in front of you and I tell them, your honor, whatever your penalty is going to be for Jane Doe today, I'm taking that penalty. That's what Jesus did for you that day on the cross. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it is. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Know that you're a sinner separated from your creator. You're separated from and by your sin. The penalty for that sin is death. But Jesus paid it. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father praying for you and me. And we have a hope and a future and an eternity in heaven, but it's a gift. It's a gift. If I was going to give you a gift today, what would you have to do? You have to accept it. And that's all Jesus is asking of you. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So if you're watching today and you feel that tug on your heart, and if you feel it, you know what I'm talking about, I would encourage you to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's all it takes. I'd like to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. God, thank you that you are the great I am. And Lord, that means something different to each person that's watching today. God, you're our provider. You're our protector. You are our redeemer. Lord, you are the one who saves our souls, who breaks the chains that bind us, who paid the penalty for our sin. And God, I lift up each person watching today. And, and Lord, I don't know where they're at, but you do. Lord, you see all and you know all. And God, I pray that if there is anyone watching today that doesn't know you as Savior, today be the day that they step out in faith, that they taste and see that the Lord is good. God, I pray today be the day of their salvation. Today be the day of restoration and redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, I pray for strength. I pray for mercy. I pray for your grace to just pour out into their lives and the lives of the ones they love. God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for all that you've done. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, I want to encourage you today if you were watching and the Lord's been dealing with your heart, but you just have some questions. I would encourage you to visit this website, peacewithgod.net, and begin your journey to peace today. 
So just like that, that house mom in prison encouraged me to share my salvation with others, I want to encourage you today, if you've made a decision, if you are seeking the Lord, look for a Christian friend that you know. Look for a pastor. If you know of a church, go to them. Seek their counsel. Seek their advice. Do not keep today a secret. If you made a decision today to follow Jesus, share that with everyone you meet. Thank you all for watching. God bless you. Have a great day.